Welcome back to another day of art, of the art development series. Um, so if it's your first time here, uh, I'm continuing a painting today that I actually started a few days back. I believe I started it on day 47, day 46 or 47. It's getting a bit tough sometimes to keep track. Uh, but this is actually a figure painting that I've done a few different drawings of already and uh, just to like kind of prepare myself for the painting and now I've div it's kind of started uh, into the painting. And so this is like what I consider the first real, real day of painting. So the first day is 100% kind of devoted to the ugly stage. So I start by kind of sketching in a little bit of the of what I'm playing on painting using like red paint. Um, and then I just kind of throw paint onto the canvas. I use like really limited val palette, only three or four values, um, and just try and block in some colors to give me a basis of what to work with. And then today is the first day that I really start to try and like shape up the painting into something that actually looks like what I'm actually painting the subject. Um, and so I, you know, kind of describe it as this game of like pushing and pulling. So I'm constantly, you know, pulling things in as in making them tighter, making them more realistic, and then also like pushing things towards abstraction, pushing things towards this like loose kind of painterly style. And it's really this dance of like back and forth. So today I started, everything needed to be kind of pulled in to be like look more accurate, be a little bit more representational. And then I've started to push a few things, pull, push, pull a few things back and forth. But then over the series of this painting, you'll see kind of more of this happening, some more pushing coming out. But today, today was mostly by those standards of me, you know, pulling things in and tightening them up. Um, and so overall, actually, I think it was a pretty nice day of painting. So I got really focused kind of in the center of the, of the portrait, like her belly underneath her breasts and like above where the legs sit. Um, I can, I'm going to keep saying portrait, I mean to say figure, but I've done so many uh, portraits recently that it's like ingrained into my mind to say that. Um, so in the figure, I kind of focused mostly on that part um, because it's really the kind of the center of focus of this pose. So she's, you know, got her hands behind her head and she's kind of stretching out her torso and creating this like really nice stretch on, you know, what is the left side of the painting or the right side of her body and then pinching in on the other side. Um, and I've talked a little bit about that, like, you know, every figure, this is like something that I've heard a while ago, and I want to say I heard this from Steve Houston, but I'm not exactly sure who I heard it from. Some, some artist that uh, has, a, has a presence online, um, that every single pose or every single gesture of a figure has a stretch and a pinch. And so on certain poses, when that really feels like the focus, that's what I like to kind of zone in on and kind of try and make the focal or kind of exaggerate. Um, so that's really what I was trying to work on today, was really trying to understand more about that stretch and more about that pinch on the side, um, and then also kind of, you know, get more representational and get better within that area. Um, and so I actually also did something, uh, I also want to say, so today I also, um, as I've said before in my painting process, I always start with my largest brushes, and then as the days of painting go on and on and on, I start shrinking the brush a little bit. So today, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm using pretty large brush, nothing too detailed, um, but I'm not using like, you know, the big flats or the size 18s or 16s that I did um, on the first day of painting. Um, and this is a technique that I actually learned from David Chevlino, uh, which is probably one of my favorite figurative artists right now. Um, he does absolutely amazing work and actually I, I hope sometime soon that he comes near New York when I'm in New York so I can go to one of his workshops because um, I'd love to see his process in person. But when I was painting today I was actually had the reference up on the screen and then I actually had a David Chevalino painting beside the reference so I had b both of them that I was looking at. Um, and I'll put up on the screen right now like which one of those paint which one of his paintings I was looking at. Um, and I was trying to kind of like steal elements a little bit from it so it's a little bit of like master copy, but really on my own figurative work. Um, but the other reason that I kept up there is to kind of like keep his spirit relevant in my mind. So his work is, as you can see, is like very loose. It's representational, but it's very, very loose, very painterly. Has this re really beautiful feeling to it, this really nice weight, um, lightness rather than weight. Really, it's really ni nice lightness. Um, so I was kind of trying to like impose that spirit maybe like a little bit subliminally into my into my mind by keeping it right in front of me right next to the reference. Um, and I think it was actually pretty effective. So this is something that, you know, when I'm trying to capture a spirit of something, I might do that more. Um, and I also do like being able to, you know, I've done this actually some similar things with my own work. So sometimes you'll do like studies in preparation, let's say for a piece. So I have like a couple little drawings and then I'm going to start a painting and I will hang up the little drawings. 
um, around and so that I can kind of like try and steal elements of what I did earlier into this larger piece. Um, and you know, similarly with, like with thumbnails or kind of all these things. And um, you know, it, it's a nice resource as you're going through to kind of try and solve problems and understand. Um, and then eventually like this knowledge kind of cauterizes and then you can use these again in the future without having to, you know, have the, uh, the, the source material or the resource like explicitly in front of you. Um, so that was kind of a, yeah, a nice experience. Um, I also have mentioned that, you know, this painting, I really am approaching it more of a study. Um, and the reason is a long study, let's say. Um, so I'm going to go through my full process uh, as in like multiple days of painting. This is not really just me sitting down on one day and just trying to kind of, you know, sketch something out roughly with paint. Um, I am going through my full process, but I'm not really seeking to make a finished piece. I'm me uh, seeking to make a study. If it's a nice study that, you know, is one of those studies that you kind of, you know, hang in your studio and you really like to reference, that would be wonderful, but that's not the objective. Um, and I really don't want to put that pressure on myself. And the reason is I haven't done figurative painting in so long. All of my last probably, it could be as many as like 50 paintings have all been focused on portraiture. Um, so the fact that I'm now doing a figurative painting this first time, this is really me trying to get back into understanding like how the paint, how paint and the figure works together. Um, and I'm actually remembering some things and learning some things that are really nice. Like if you have never, if you're into figurative painting and you've never tried um, oil painting, uh, I highly recommend that you do that. Uh, oil paint is just like the perfect medium for painting flat the flesh um, because it's, it blends so, like shadows can be blended so nicely, which by the way is a blessing and a curse, right? You can easily over blend everything, but when you kind of strike that right balance, um, you can just get these like really nice shadows. So there's one specific shadow that I stole from David Chevlino's work, uh, also Bridgman's work. So who knows, you know, Bridgman came before David Chevlino and who knows who came before Bridgman. Uh, eventually someone maybe even stole it from a cave painter if you go far enough back. But anyway, I took this kind of technique, which is um, on her belly. So it's on the right side of the painting or her left side. I added a shadow that wasn't present to kind of indicate this change in plane from the side of the body to the center. Um, and the way that I did that is with like a medium dark stroke, let's say, and I used the uh, clean brush to kind of blend out either side of it. And I think that's what David Chevlino did in the painting that I showed earlier um, to create this like really nice effect that shows, it, it helps like kind of bring out some of the elegance in the model. Like it kind of adds this like, it adds more form, it adds more elegance. Um, and when it fits, like you can't just add that, you know, if the light was shining on that side, it would make no sense. But because there's, there's kind of this like lighting aspect that's happening on the right side of the painting, um, you, you can actually get away with that. Uh, so kind of an interesting, interesting uh, piece of it. So anyway, I think this is enough discussing about today. I'm going to tease a little bit what the next session will be, and then we'll kind of, I'll kind of wrap this up and I'll let the, let the rest of the painting time lapse just kind of play out with some music. Um, so one of the things that I didn't really catch about this reference when I was, well, I did and I didn't when I was drawing it, was that the lighting is a bit hard to understand. It seems like there's either multiple light sources or a lot of bounce lighting in this, in this um, figure, draw, or this, the, the, the reference, the photo reference, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it, it is what it is, right? It's just, one, it's just one type of reference. But it is true that when you're kind of doing a study, let's say, or when you want to make things easier on yourself, it's better to have one light source with just kind of a normal amount of bounce light, not exaggerated bounce light. Um, because otherwise you're kind of chasing the light. And I was finding that a little bit um, where I was not fully understanding like sometimes how to divide. Like it's strange that the right side, you know, it's strange that the side of her body that's in shadow the, the face is not in shadow and it must be because the light source there's two light sources above her face or something like that or like it's like a, a, a well-lit studio where there's some light bouncing off and, and off the ceiling maybe even um and so i was kind of you know this expression chasing the light is more often used it means like when you're more often used when you're like painting plain air um and you know the sun is setting and you shouldn't be constantly trying to change your light to try and chase it uh but i think this is like an okay application of that expression uh, so I'm a little bit chasing the light in the reference when I think I should make some decisions 
about how the how the how the figure should be lit and I think that will help me solve like a few more problems like I'm really running into some problems with the neck and the face um, and kind of like these values that are really blending together along the, the you know the, like the clavicle like basically from the breasts up I would say um, having trouble like understanding how to blend those in so I think I'm just gonna pick a light source next time um, and I can kind of you know run with that and see how it works uh, but also it's good to kind of let this painting sit now for a day or two and then I'll come back to it and look at it with fresh, eye, fresh eyes and kind of continue the study. Um, so I think that's everything.